How's it going, everybody? How are you? <clears throat> Recently, I had the pleasure of talking with a good friend and colleague, Steve Blackburn, who spent his career as an architect and uh, today now pursues his lifelong passion of traveling the world and capturing the moment, plain air with pen and ink. Join us for the conversation. Did you ever think when you're at an amusement park or at a um, water park, or even, you know, if you're uh, there at um, a fast food place like a McDonald's or, or, and they have something there for the children and a, a little recreation space, well, somebody has to design that. And somebody has to make a proposal and somebody has to put that all together and, and combine all of these different elements to make a fun, safe, magical place. And so today we're going to interview an architect who did that for, for most of his career. And what you're seeing now is his uh, latest building before um, he retired. And he's been retired, I believe, for about uh, 10 months. So uh, I'd like everybody to uh, welcome uh, Steve Blackburn. And I'm going to get off the screen share there. Steve, how are you? Hey, Liam. It's great to see you. Good. To Thanks for inviting me on to this interview. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm honored. Thank you. Oh, well, thank you. I'm honored to you have somebody of, of your uh, artistic and technical you know, capacity uh, with us for the interview. So um, can you give us sort of a 10-cent tour of your life? You said you started around 1980, 84. For your, you are an artist, you're drawing as a kid, you know you have a love for art, but your dad tells you, listen, you got, you got to do something with this that's uh, technical mm -hmm. and that you just can't be an artist, you know, throwing yourself out in the world. And so you start to move into architecture. Can you, can you speak to us? Um, yeah, so my, uh, I, I was, uh, super, art was my favorite subject <laughs> when I was growing up. Uh, I would always be coloring, drawing, uh, making things, and I told uh, my parents, yeah, that, uh, what do you want to be when you grow up? I want to be an artist. And my naval engineer dad says, well, you should find a profession of some sort. I think what he didn't want was a starving artist in the family. <laughs> That's probably sure. where that came from. Sure. <laughs> and so... Uh, I asked my high school counselor, so I was a junior in high school, and uh, so I was 16 years old, and he said, uh, what would you like to do with your life? And I said, I'd like to be an artist. My dad thinks I should be a professional of some sort. And uh, he says, wow, you have really high scores in math and science. I said, yeah, those, those come pretty easy to me, but I, I really love art. And he says, you should be an architect. He says, it's the perfect blend of artists and scientists. And I was wow. like, Wow. And, you know, it was like a five-minute, you know, counselor meeting. It Off I went. Changed the course of your life. Isn't that crazy? Just wow. like that pivot. So it was great advice. And, you know, I wish that I could go find him and let him know how it all turned out. Because it's been a, a fabulous career. Because uh, I, I have discovered what he said is true. That architecture is the perfect blend between art and science. And uh, I've enjoyed it. I retired from 32 years in the profession after five years of schooling, so nearly four decades of, of this, and uh, it's been great. But now that I'm re retired, retired from architecture, uh, I'm certainly not retired from life. You can see behind me is yes, is, is, is your this, life. Uh, yes, this is my life. This is uh, these are places that either I want to go. I've been. I've. Uh, drawn, I've painted, you know, it's, uh, I, I've set myself up in this creative environment. Uh, as you know, uh, we're coming to, uh, to Europe here in just two weeks and looking forward to seeing you when we're there. Yes. And, um, you know, what I love to do, Liam, is sketch on location. So I'm a big fan of two things, nature and, and buildings, architecture. And I think, uh, Paris and the rest of France is going to give me Lots of material to uh, to uh, that's where I get my greatest joy. Lots of inspiration. Yeah, okay. for many artists before us, right? 
And like many, many, many artists before us, you know, I always say, you know, um, for the Jewish people, there's, you know, Jerusalem, for the Christian. For Christianity, there's Vatican. For the Muslim world, world, there's Mecca. And for the artist, it's Paris. It's Paris. You know, that's this is this is our our place where where it just does not you know get any better. So, um, and I I've been to France when I was 20 years old. I studied abroad, which completely changed my whole world view. And um, I'm going to show you. This is now an antique, but this is my first sketching journal so this and, is the journal that you had have you decided now to become an architect at this point yes i'm in architecture school so you're this point young yeah, man I'm, architecture school you're yes. coming to the end then you just have this journal with no real intent to draw right specifically i'm now going to draw what i see you're just you're just recording your life and these beautiful pictures emerge yeah in fact i i find this book at the bookstore and this is what it's called the nothing book ah. the nothing book <laughs> want to make something out of it and so yeah it's this is obviously a treasure do you remember uh, the store that, that that you bought this from yeah this is a uh, sunflower supply in lawrence kansas and uh, it was a blank book never seen one like it didn't know what i was going to do with it i just started uh making notes and documenting my my summer and show us some of your favorite, um, you have some really, really um, memorable uh, sketches. And these are in pencil. Yes, these are in pencil. This entire book's in pencil. This is probably my favorite. La Mont Saint Michel. If you can see that yes. as well. That's beautiful. And, uh, Lots of detail. It's awesome. Got the waves and the ocean. Yes. Courageous. So, I haven't seen it. Yeah, courageous. And uh, my story is a story of courage. Uh, strength and courage because as a young artist you are afraid right a blank canvas a blank book a blank sheet of paper is, what do, can be can be one of the scariest things it because um it can be scary because of its the infinite choices that you have it can be anything i suppose it's the same for a sculptor with um with bronze or or throwing a pot i don't i don't know that that art form, but I'm sure it's, if you've got a block of clay, a lump of clay. What do you do with it? You're looking at it, or, you know, we've always heard that, you know, Michelangelo looked at a block of granite and said, I'm going to chisel away everything that's not the pieta, I guess. <laughs> right, that's what he used to say. How do you make this beautiful forms? I just chisel away the stuff that's not the form. Right. That's right, that's right. <laughs> So, um, and so you're sketching, you all of a sudden, you, you know, you've made the choice to go into architecture. Yes. You're starting to combine your childhood love now. And so now you're thinking architecture, you're thinking you're going to school and then now, so, you, so you start to um, draw in pencil. And then you have sort of a, another pivotal moment where you meet a colleague or someone, I, I forget exactly who, and this person says to you, you're not going deep enough in the dark. You're not exploring the dark, which means that your light is not light enough. That's right. That's it's right. Sort of um, wishy-washy. Your statements are not bold to give it the character and to give it the depth. And so you've been using pencil, and um, I've experimented with pencils. So um, I'm not sure if you used one pencil, but. For people who don't know, they have a whole thing where you go from very, very soft to very, very light. Right. But it doesn't matter. You cannot get a pencil as dark as you can with ink. That's right. Correct? So let me just reinforce your little story because that was another pivotal part of my journey. Uh, my friend Jennifer, who was a year older than me in architecture school, was uh, in Italy with me during the summer of 1984. She was looking at my sketches. She was giving me some counsel, and she said, Steve, you can't be afraid of contrast, because she could see that I was being timid with my pencil. And that's the word she used, afraid. Yes, I, I believe it was. You have to and be so courageous. You have to go she, in there. Right? She taught me how to wow. you know, oh. make, a de make a decision about what is, what is dark, what is black. So that's in, the same, that's in the same nothing book. 
It's in the same book. It's just later in, in my in my in my journey. After you met and, her, and so now your that book holds your transition from right pencil so to ink. You oh, make sure, baby! Wow. So you really you listened to her, and you said, yes. "I'm going for it." I, I, I I'm hear going you. for it. I'm going. And for it. and this was a transition before I started using ink because, baby, when you use ink, there's no going back. There's no going back. Right. So. Um, I'll sh I'll share some of my ink sketches with you now because that is my medium. I decided that ink is is where it's at. Some of these drawings behind me, the Colosseum and so forth, um, they they start off in pencil to make sure I get the proportions correctly. Ah, okay. So you do sort of start off, make a a, a little sketch that gives you the everything uh, framework, and then once you got the framework, boom, you go in and and provide the tonal values. That That's correct? right. That's right. And so you can, uh, Beautiful. so a sketch like this would start off as a, as very light pencil, just to make sure that the dome is where it should be. The columns, I've got the right spacing of the columns. I've got the framework. And then the ink is actually the fastest thing because once I have the framework, I just go for it. You just go for it. So, uh, do you have a favorite, um, pencil hardness that you like to use, like a, uh, you know, 4B, they you six or or whatever, or does it just not matter? You just get any pencil and then and then lightly uh, uh, black it in. That's beautiful. Yeah, I I now use a red wow. 2B pencil. Red 2B, okay. Yeah, and I just keep it sharp, and I do it very lightly. You can't even see it, obviously. You you, you look it onto here. No, not at all. So you don't you, go back and erase. You just cover right over. Cover right over, yeah. Unless it's it's really obvious, um, I might do a little bit of erasing, but yeah, this is um, this is what I love to do now. Beautiful. And then I go go back in with a with a really dark pen to do an outline at the Absolutely. end. Absolutely. Just to make it pop against. Now, the now is that does does that does that pen have a a? Because it looks like the pen that you're using is a very one of those very fine point uh, pens, uh, felt yeah. tip. You know that comes to a point almost. Is that correct? I don't know what you call these, but it's not a ballpoint. Yeah. It's no, no. I'll I'll, uh, I'll show it to you here. Um, let me stop share for a second. Yeah, I'm a big fan of um, of both Statler Mars or Statler. Okay. All right. Can can we see the tip? So that's an F. Can we yeah. can we see the tip? A little, a little bit, uh, yeah. Okay, I see. All righty, all righty. So yeah. that's what you're using, and then do you use a thicker one to make the yep. uh, thicker lines. So here's a Faber Castell. That is a B. So it's a bold back. There tip. you go. There you go. That's okay. the end product. And then I'll use an S or um, to, to lay down, you know, fenestration lines and, and so forth. And there so, the is, there, is there a weight of paper that you uh, prefer now? Because some papers have texture, you know, and they're, they're heavier than others. You know, I am a big fan of these uh, very inexpensive sketch books that you sure. find at, at, at hobby stores. And I think, gosh, I'm not a expert at poundage maybe an 80 pound weight I, I don't right know. exactly so it's a standard weight the standard sketchbook you're not going for anything super special no no, no. uh it has a little tooth to it a little tooth so yep so uh nothing special though i don't spend i don't spend a lot of money on materials um i spend money on traveling to the place <laughs> sure absolutely <laughs> So um, yep. show us a little bit, some more of your of your favorite. Um... Sure. So this is, uh, let me get back to my share screen. This is a, a trip we took to the Baltic Sea. And uh, wow. like I've never seen anything like this. This is uh, obviously Russian architecture. And um, now clearly they use uh, many ideals from the Greeks. Uh, in in Russia to create their architecture. Uh, this is in uh, Eastern Europe, so uh, Tallinn. Beautiful. Yeah, this is the main square at Tallinn. So you can see, I mean, I'm not very. It's kind of messy, but in the total composition, it's good, right? Um, 
Absolutely, you, absolutely. That you this is this is plain air. This is plain air drawing. You're sitting down at a cafe or somewhere. You're sitting down. You've got your sketch pad open, and then you're just going for it. That's right. That's exactly right. And uh, that's what I do. I you know one of the uh, one of the big deals uh, for me as an artist is finding the right place to spend forty five minutes to an hour and a half to sit somewhere. A cafe is a perfect example. I like right. to find a cafe that might be in the shade, but still has the right vantage point. It doesn't even matter what the food is like at the cafe. It's the vantage point. Right. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Absolutely. And um, do you, um, let's say, okay, so you're on vacation, you're on vacation with the family, and so... Or, or or whatever, and so it's just not an art thing, right? This is a vacation, and so you just can't devote all your time to, to the art. So you kind of have to be thinking, well, what's going to be the right time? What's going to be the right place? Do you go out like one day and kind of canvas the neighborhood and kind of get ideas, or is it just a total inspiration? Boom. Okay, there you are. Is that you? That's you. That's, yeah. Okay. So here I am. I'm at the, I'm at the Acropolis. And I'm sketching on location, but I actually get a photograph of it in front of me. So because I'm I'm working on detail here, and okay, hopefully... okay, all right, all right, all right. I understand. That's awesome. Yep. So you're so, pulling what whatever resources you need in terms of logistics, in terms of brochures or whatever. That's right. You whatever make... I need. Here I am at a cafe. You can see there. I'm just using a simple mechanical pencil. Right. In this case, can you see that? Absolutely. The kind that you yeah. pump like this, and a little piece of graphite yeah. comes out. Yeah. Yeah, I think I can get four of them for a dollar here. Right. <laughs> <laughs> wow. So, you know that where I was sitting, I'm I'm sketching this. So I'm right in front of this uh, cafe. Wow. Page, That's beautiful. Case. Yeah. And so uh, there, there's how they uh, I really uh, love the uh, attention you're putting into the shadows. You really get the sensation that it's, you know, it looks like it's uh, 3 o'clock, 2 o'clock. You know, the sun is coming off of that. You know, you're not uh, at sunset. The sun is up in the sky there, you know, just away from noon or just before noon. So this looks like it's either 10 o'clock or 2 o'clock in the afternoon. That's right. Uh, Very strong. And, you know, I, I love days where – the sun is out because I have to find that contrast. Where is the light coming from? Right. Where is it the darkest? Because that's what makes a good sketch, in my opinion. And some are really, you know, I don't have to spend a lot of time. Here's a, I'm, I just made a, uh, a, a five mile hike up to the top in Positano. I'm sweating like a pig. It's summer. And I see this tower. I'm like, I, I'm going to sketch this. This is about eight to ten minutes. Oh, so wow. I, okay. Yeah. No, I don't even – I don't have time for pencil. I just go straight to – I just go straight to an F uh, pen on this. So I, this is one – this is one uh, weight of pen. Wow. Right? That's yeah. awesome. Very so, bold. Yeah, you've got a, you've got a uh, st uh, very steady hand. I can't – I, I shake a lot when I'm, you know <laughs> – <laughs> Whereas this one, I'm actually sitting at a table. So I've got a very stable environment. The other right. one, I was standing. And so I took, you know, this is probably an hour and a half. It's got, you know, very little detail on the Positano Hill, but very much detail on the tile dome. And uh, it turned out to be a very nice composition. Beautiful. That's awesome. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> there are, um, you know... Lots of artists out there, lots of people doing their artwork. What is um, nice about your work is that there's a story behind your your work. At each place is a, a place you can talk about, and this is I was here, and this is what happened to me. Like you said, I was sweating like a bag, and, da, 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 and so you know, <laughs> that um, each piece is sort of a snapshot of your life as opposed to conceptual art where you don't have that sort of impressionism, that impressionist quality. 
um, as you uh, think about uh, promoting your art? Are you are you uh, incorporating your narrative? Are you approaching? Um, do you have your work in a, a gallery? And are you approaching that from that narrative of it's you know more than just uh, uh, a beautiful piece of art, but it's really sort of a a, 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 port, a portion of your life. You know, it's a snapshot of your life. Well, that's a really good question. Um, you know, my art obviously been for the public good through architecture because everything that I uh, create and dream and draw and build uh, serves others. The art that I've been sharing with you uh, today has been a very personal journey. It's, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's more of a, every, every time I look at one of my sketches, it takes me right back to the smells, the temperature, the tastes, everything that was happening in that, hour period of time and uh i just love it three things i love about travel is anticipating like right right now i'm i'm anticipating coming to france right uh, the second thing is actually being there and and sketching on location and then the third is recording it in a way that i can enjoy for years to come so i have these um i'm starting to now make books uh of my uh my sketches do those have um a, a monetary value to them. The priceless to me. Right. Uh, Absolutely. Everyone that I travel with that, uh, you know, bears with me as I sit and sketch, uh, they want them. They want these sketches because they, you know, don't know how to do that. And, uh, they were there when it was created. And I, uh, I've had kind of a policy of, I don't sell my work. You know, this, this is for me. Now that I'm retired, I don't know what the future might bring. Um, I, I certainly have a talent that is valuable to people. Uh, I've been giving these sketches as gifts to my very, very close friends, and they treasure them. They're, someone told me the other day, he said, uh, that's, that, that painting you did for me of my, uh, of my catamaran, it's like the most treasured possession I have. And I was like, <laughs> really? I mean, it's so touching uh, to think about, you know, Something like that means so much for others. So, Absolutely. yeah, I've been, I had a friend the other day who said, you know, Steve, I want to take your black and white sketches and, uh, have you work with my son and put them on metal, you know, to transfer them onto metal. Wow. And, and I thought, well, you know, that would really look good, I think, you know, because they're black and white and to be on a, an aluminum or a, a metal surface would probably be a really cool piece of art. Absolutely. So I don't, I don't know. I don't know what the future brings. Um, uh, I love getting to know other artists and, and how they uh, craft their their work. And uh, I've enjoyed watching the you paint on on demand, if you yeah. will, uh, <laughs> there in France, and it's inspiring to me. And I know you do some of that work for for patrons, and, and um, I, I'd love to know how to do that because uh, I could probably crank out, you know, a few sketches a week and. And make a a pretty nice little another stream of income. Yes, absolutely. And um, you know, I, I started uh, painting in Paris maybe uh, ten years ago, and there wasn't um, very much. I didn't get a sensation that my artwork was uh, resonating, and it was because I was not. I didn't really have any sort of uh, narrative behind my work. I was just like, this is. Um, a tonalist, realist method that has its origins from here, and I come from this school, and just like nobody cares, cared at that point. But now that I'm uh, putting more of a narrative to my work, I'm finding that uh, it's beginning to uh, resonate more. And, and so you, I think, because our work is similar in the sense that we're sort of impressionists. We're grabbing a moment in time, an impression in time, and saying, we're here on this planet at this time, at this point, uh, in the as the Earth goes around the sun through the solar system and the universe, that uh, uh, you could uh, do a uh, you could do a live um, sort of Facebook thing and say, "Hey, I'm going to be doing this thing," and get more of that narrative into uh, into your work. It's beautiful work. Beautiful. Thank work. you. So uh, we've got ten minutes left, and um, I always like to end these um, 
these interviews with the 10 questions from Bernard Pivot, who's like the Johnny Carson of France. What do you <laughs> would you like to answer this question? I'll, I'll do my best. Okay. Well, Steve, what is your favorite word? Freedom. Freedom. What is your least favorite word? Um, bondage. What turns you on creatively, spiritually, or emotionally? Nature. Awesome. What turns you off? Um, pollution. What is your favorite curse word? Shit. <laughs> what sound or noise do you love? Uh, birds singing in the morning. What sound or noise do you hate? Uh, trash trucks picking up trash in the morning. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Two completely opposite sounds. Okay. What profession other than your own would you like to attempt? Um, I am a big fan of network marketing, direct sales, because I think it's going to change the way the world works. The last free enterprise system. I agree. Yes. What profession would you like not to do? What profession is not something you enjoy? Uh, I saw someone jackhammering a sidewalk yesterday, and I said to Dee, my lovely wife, now there's something I'm glad that I don't do. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Absolutely, in the sun that, for eight hours. That would, that would mess up my sketching. Hand. Absolutely, yes. <laughs> and then lastly, if heaven exists, what would you like to hear God say when you arrive at the pearly gates? I believe heaven does exist, and here's what I'm expecting him to say. Stephen, my son, welcome to your new home, my good and faithful servant. There you go. Beautiful. And then you're going to... questions. You're going to bring out your pad and you're going to sketch what you see. <laughs> he, he's the ultimate creator. I mean, Absolutely. Uh, I, I've, I've often wondered about that. It's like, okay, uh, I feel like I'm inspired by God to create what I create, and I see what he's created in nature. What is heaven going to be like? Yes. Yeah, so they're, they're creating mansions for us. Well, those are buildings. You know, what, what's his style? Exactly, so, exactly. I get the same yeah. when, I'm, when I'm painting and I'm putting together the colors on the palette. I'm like, this is all God's, you know, choices i'm just That's recreating right. his choices down here you know it's so awesome all right steve he, he's the best artist he is the best artist all right it was a a pleasure to talk with you looking forward to seeing you here in paris and um thank you so much for this interview thanks Liam. you're the best all right thank you uh, bye -bye. talk to you soon bye-bye